So I want to talk a little bit about the parole process. Just yeah, in case yeah. there's somebody in there that wants to, you know, yeah. maybe they can learn something a little bit. Tell me why uh, you mentioned that one of your parole hearings was really quick. One took long. What did you learn from the process and what do people have to look forward to? And are, do you agree with the process? Are you happy with it? Yeah. So the first thing I would say is if you're going to the parole board, your loved one is going to the parole board and you need some assistance, contact me. Okay. I have mastered that shit. Good. Literally. Good. I was taught by some of the greatest Kifi Dashell, Dominique Tanks, Oscar Mejia, like great people with deep insights, convicts, good dudes. Um, you know, we'd run class and write curriculum. Like we, when we zeroed in on the point where we says, you know, I'm tired of losing and being in prison and, and being excited over like a punk ass soup and an ice cream and being content, you know, forget all that. When we zeroed in on the fact that we're going to get home, like we went in, we had a cold team of people. There was like 20 dudes on that yard good dudes that we zeroed in just devoured information so the first time i went i was denied seven years the second time i went my hearing took under an hour the commissioner came back and said that was probably one of the easiest decisions i've ever made why do you think that is because i left no open doors i examined myself every aspect of myself as hard and brutal as it was it was the hardest thing in the world um i've done what the gang world calls the hardest things in the world you know, I, I committed a murder. I did a life sentence standing up, went home on my chin up to look at yourself, to turn around and look at yourself and actually examine yourself. That's hard, but you got to put in that work because they're going to ask you really, really difficult questions. They want to know the why behind the why. Like, for example, what's some of the questions they'll ask you? So uh, why'd you join a gang? Oh, I, I, I grew up in it. It was in my family. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have much choice. That's a denial immediately. I joined a gang because I wanted acceptance. I wanted love. And I used to see it in the movies. And the movies were like advertisements to me. So I took those advertisements to the real thing. And I joined. And I got filled up with that. And by the time I realized it was the wrong thing, I was already too far in. It was too late. That's a better answer. Yeah. You got to have... So it's almost like uh, uh, stop blaming the people and de they'll stop denying what you did. Like You have to admit that what you did was wrong, basically. And they always say, what... what um." What level of responsibility does your victim have? Mm -hmm. Zero. Immediately say the answer, zero. I don't care if he was the same person as you and a gang member, a shooter, a gunner, whatever. When you're coming down to like expressing remorse, that doesn't deserve, you know, in front of the board, zero. He has zero responsibility. It was all me. I made the decision. It was a multitude of decisions. I made the decision to join the gang, to run around every night, to go out past my curfew, to get high, to hold guns, to shoot guns, to carry guns. All those decisions combined led to this man's death. When you start rehearsing and practicing those things that you're supposed to say, do you start believing them? Like, you know what? Even though, like, I'm getting coached to say this, like, this is actually true. Yeah, so I, I, I have a great deal of, like, self-understanding. Like, I've always been a really introspective person. Like, I can understand things and, and, and I can translate them in my mind really well. Um, I understood that because there was one point, like, where I was getting prepared for board for, like, five years. I was just in my shit dealing with the worst decisions I ever made in my life. And it was really affecting my spirit. And, and, and you go to the board, you got to, we say fall on the sword. You got to use to talk about yourself in the worst ways. Like my boy always said, when you walk in that pro board, don't defend lonely, throw his ass under the bus, sit there as Brian and throw lonely under the bus. Damn. That was a good advice right there. Um, but yeah, I started, like really believing like, damn, you're a terrible human being. Like you don't deserve any, like it's crazy because you repeat these things for years over and over to where I was able to separate what I needed to do for board compared to my real like psychological being able to carry on and sleep at night. So yeah, I was able to do that, but that's a hard, uh, that's a hard thing to navigate right there. Do you feel like the process is fair? The people are fair? The pro At board? this point, yeah. It, it, at this point, it's fair. I don't know how long it's going to stay that way. You do got to put in work. It's not a, it's not a cakewalk, but you do got to put in work. Um, but when I went, yeah, it was fair. I've seen some people get some unfair shakes, but generally, yeah, it was fair. Do you feel like uh, society has changed their outlook on felons? Like before, you know, if you're a convicted felon, man, that word carries so much weight in a negative tone. Do you feel like society has looked up, like differently and what has changed, do you think? I used to come home, you know, fresh out of jail worship came from the hood, you know, Externally, anything outside of that, I was just a pariah. Like, yeah, you terrible. Bad, bad hombre. Yeah, you bad hombre. <laughs> You're a gang member scumbag. So now I come out of jail to like 
like almost like a hero. Like people say, congratulations. I'm thinking, congratulations for what? Getting out of prison? Yeah. Yeah. It, like I felt a lot of guilt for a while behind that. But yeah, people see, here's the thing. Like, cause these guys coming out of prison, like they're the ones that are going to change the world. It's crazy because who in this world has been confined to a box and spent the last 10 years like I did, your only job was get to know every single aspect of yourself. You read hundreds of books, read hundreds of curriculum, fill up hundreds of composition books to discover yourself and get loose in the world. So I came out here with mad life skills. It's just to, to execute on them. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect because they get tested. I do have a line. Lonely's not dead. He's still very much there, you know? Mm. Um, and I pray to God that day never comes where like I get pushed past that point where the snap comes and I fuck up in front of the world. Yeah. You know? Do you feel like there's a way of doing that on the outside? Like you don't have to wait till you're in prison and locked away for 29 years to find yourself or to work on yourself. Do you, do you feel like there's ways people can do that out here? Yeah. Look at your examples. The, the, when I sat in a visit room in prison, the biggest minus the biggest absence in the visit room was a father very rare did you see a dad so and that's that's the common denominator that's that's not ironic right there you know people are going and looking for that stuff they're looking for role models look to the right ones like you know we talked about the independence like look what this dude's doing right here you know check out what these guys are doing all these different people on youtube like there's a lot of really good role models there's some people that i sit back and i really admire these dudes what they're doing who are some people that you recommend people follow or, or listen to um i mean I, i'm always going to say my favorites you know uh you know i, I conejo hazard you know bozo um i young uno from coima that dude got bars too he's hard um I listened to um, RJ. I've been bumping RJ a lot lately. Um, I had to throw back with Lloyd Banks like the last week. You know, I spent like a week on Banks on Hunger for More. Hell yeah. Um, Classic. Yeah. I'm only, Conejo just dropped the reset like, a, like an additional part. I've been kind of on that for the last couple of days. But uh, yeah, if it's hard, you know, and like I said, I'm playing catch up. I'm so far behind. I'll discover a new song and then I'll look five years ago like, damn, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, you know, it is what it is. 